Hello, uh, we are live with myself, Reese Perrett for Physio Matters First Steps, Fran Peplow and Claire Gibson. Today we're talking about how physiotherapy students should be spending their summer, especially if they're coming from college straight into university. So if we can, can you please let us know if we're live and if you can hear us, if you've got any tech problems, please let us know. Hopefully everyone can hear us and, and see us. Um, well, not so much my face, but you two there. Um, so, Claire, if you'd like to just give yourself a little bit of an introduction. As, uh, you know, I know you're a lecturer, part of an MSK and, and BSc lead, uh, but tell us a little bit about yourself just quickly. So, yeah, thanks, Rhys. Um, I've been qualified as a physio about, well, nearly 30 years now, which is quite scary and very dating. But um, it's been, yeah, my kind of life and passion since I was uh, 22 or 23 and graduated from Guy's um, Hospital in London. And um, it has brought me so many opportunities that uh, I think, you know, it's one of those careers that you can do an awful lot with in many different directions. And um, yeah, the scope is out there for everyone to, to grab. So yeah, that's my kind of opening line is, is yeah, you're at the start now. Um, physio is a great career. Let's, um, let's get some ideas flowing so that you can make a good start. Absolutely. And Fran, you are part of the Physio Matters First Steps um, new batch, should we say. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and where are you studying at the moment? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm one of the new members of First Steps. So I'm really pleased to have joined the team. Um, I am one of the MSc pre-reg students at St Mary's University in Twickenham. Uh, Claire is one of my lecturers and we've just come to the end of our first year and we'll be going on placement in September. Awesome. So Fran, we'll start I'll ask you a question first, and I know I've not said that I'll ask you a question, but did you do anything? You've just finished your first year. I've just finished my second year. So it was a, two years ago when I was going through my summer pre-physio course. But can you remember anything that you did last summer to prepare yourself for your MSc? MS, MSc? Um, yeah, so it was a strange summer for me in a way, um, because I'd actually been made redundant from my previous job. Um, and then I started working for NHS Test and Trace <laughs> on the phone lines, um, which is actually a really good experience. Um, and it got me used to dealing with people professionally on a phone in a healthcare kind of environment and thinking on your feet. Um, the thing for me, because I came from a completely unrelated career, um, I was terrified about anatomy, absolutely terrified in advance. Um, so I bought an anatomy colouring book <laughs> off of Amazon just to start to try to get myself familiar um, with things in the body and just the names. Um, and to be honest, it was still a massive learning curve. Um, it was very steep um, to start with. We actually had our first anatomy lecture and I got in my car and I cried, um, <laughs> which Claire actually taught that lecture, which is probably why it's funny <laughs> to her. Um, I thought I'm never, ever going to be able to do this. I hadn't even, even with what I'd kind of looked at, I had no idea of some of the things we talked about. Um, but actually it was fine. It was fine in the end. It's just, you get used to it and you get used to that new information. But I think like for me, I in like looking back now, I might have looked more specifically at some of the anatomy, like muscle groups was the big one for me. So I might have just got myself a bit more familiar with origins and insertions and nerve innovations of just those big muscles and the big muscle groups. And I think that might have made my life a bit easier in my first term. <laughs> uh, I think that that's absolutely something that a lot of people will be worrying about anatomy like my background's in strength and conditioning so i've got previous degrees in strength and conditioning and sports science and i've spent 10 years training people but anatomy is still one that gets me even though i'm you know second year finishing my second year physio i've done 10 years with training and msk related type of things with sports uh, sports science so claire we'll, we'll bring you in there and Fran's made some some interesting points there, particularly not so much 
of uh, how bad the uh, the first lecture went, but more <laughs> so on how to prepare. I think that you mentioned, Fran, the, um, the Colour and Anatomy book is quite popular. It's something I started with. But where would you start, Claire, or where would you advise people to start as a lecturer looking on the other side of the fence, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's something we get asked all the time. If there was an email that came through most popular, it would be like, what can I do to prepare myself? And we do kind of say, you know, don't worry, we'll teach you everything. But yeah, I think some anatomy preparation never goes amiss. Um, the colouring book is a great place to start, but I think as well now, there's some great apps out there. Essential Anatomy is um, such an easy and interactive app. I would definitely download it and just get yourself familiarised with the basic bones and some of the muscles, like Fran was saying, some of the bigger muscle groups and just thinking. I always think anatomy is a bit like a new language. You've got to get your head around things like terms like anterior, posterior, you know, all of these kind of new terminology, getting your tongue around it in terms of the Latin side of it and all of the sort of pronunciation is probably the hardest bit. So I would just say, yeah, download an app, start to kind of verbalize it. So really most courses will have some sort of anatomy assessment, which is verbal. So saying things out loud and um, perhaps grabbing, you know, your flatmate or somebody and just starting to kind of have a, um, you know, a sort of pointing out muscles um, and seeing what happens, you know, when muscles contract, that type of thing is all, um, yeah, good practice. Absolutely. It's, that's something that I feel like I've missed out a little bit on because I'm living at home. I've got a, a part, my partner and my daughter. We don't really have those housemates that we can practice on. Yeah. And uh, as much as I can you know, drag in my, my partner and my daughter, she's 18 months, she doesn't really want to sit still and be <laughs> mess around with her muscles and stuff. Um, yeah. So that's something that's really important. But if somebody's Know, not yet moved into the, the student halls where can they sort of get that kind of experience or is that yeah. possible i think a lot of people end up buying some sort of half skeleton or a sort of uh, maybe not the full skeleton but a, like a little knee one and i think that that's quite good for familiarizing yourself with your bones um and then almost you know just on yourself which sounds a bit weird but you know just having a look at muscles around the the legs and your arms it's it's all there for you to see hopefully so um yeah start start at home with yourself and, and broaden out <laughs> i think as well like i would say that don't panic when other people know loads yeah. on the first day I, it's probably more relevant for msc students or or, or bsc students who've got other people on their course who have had a previous degree in something like sports science yeah and that people will use abbreviations but you're not no one's going to think you're stupid <laughs> so yeah. just pipe up and say i don't know what that abbreviation is and then it's someone not... will say um yeah. and actually that so that's the hardest bit is to be brave and pipe up. But believe me, there'll be 20 other people in that room thinking, I am so glad that they asked because I really wanted to. It's like the first episode of Line of Duty. There's so many acronyms and things that people are, what? But yes, exactly. <laughs> like Fran says, always ask. Yeah. Absolutely. That's something I, I know you, you mentioned people who done previous degrees there Fran but I did a previous degree and still felt like I didn't know anything <laughs> I was still after saying I don't know what that means and uh, so that that absolutely goes across the board and you do find that certain people and one of them will be happy to ask questions but a lot of people will sit there feeling a little bit silly not knowing but will persevere and will try and get through it and it's really important I think to ask those questions and to gain an understanding and you know, have a two-way conversation with the lecturers as well. I think that's quite an important aspect. Yeah, and I think, sorry Claire, I was gonna say that this year, and it probably will affect students into next year, is we had some lectures online because of COVID and there is nothing more demoralizing for a lecturer than speaking to a whole class of people and nobody saying anything. Because it's like, have you got it? Are you still there? Have you fallen asleep? Right. Just say something. And actually, if you engage with your lecturers, you get a lot more out of it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the, the other thing I was going to say, you know, or if you feel you can't put your hand up and be, you know, kind of bold enough to ask your question if you feel it's stupid, but it probably isn't, I would always just, you know, hang around afterwards and and ask it one to one or email later. Don't ever kind of think that you can't ever ask that question. Yeah, I do think it's something that a lot of people will be wondering and want to ask. And if, they, if one person can just ask in the, the lecture or in the practical, it saves the lecturer a bit of time because they're probably getting 20 emails about the same thing of <laughs> students that <laughs> didn't want to ask the question in the lecture. True, yeah. <laughs> on, on your preparation point, another thing that kind of comes to mind is like, try and work out what type of learner you are. So for me, I needed quizzes or mock exam to replicate that environment to cement the knowledge. So other people are really visual in the way they learn and other people are really tactile or kinesthetic in the way that they learn. And just try and hone in early on on what works for you and don't waste your time doing stuff that doesn't because um, yeah. you're going to be quite time short anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's, there's, you know, the auditory learners as well with podcasts and like you say, Fran, yeah, try and understand which is your best route in to learn is, is a great bit of preparation. Absolutely. I'm definitely a visual learner, or but I like to listen to podcasts in the car when I'm driving to, yeah. to work yeah. or even to, to uni. Um, I had a discussion with a colleague yesterday about some elbow pain that I've, I've um, got a, a sports athlete with um i work with them on an snc point of view but they're coming to me because they know i'm doing physio a physio degree and i'm like i don't know a lot of these um so i'm talking to colleagues that i work with who are physios and um, they're able to give me insights and then on the way home i'm listening to podcasts just to get that extra understanding because although uni is quite daunting and it's three years of your life you can't actually learn everything on you in uni as well so it's really important to have some extracurricular activities and revision things like that so it's really important to understand what type of learner you are if you need practical you know revision sessions visuals like youtube or listening to a podcast on your iphone or samsung or whatever so Absolutely. Sorry, Claire, I was going to ask what in terms of the more practical things about preparing for uni and like and, and Reese as well, like what do you think are the things like before that first day of term that are a good idea to tick off? So um, there will be things that um, you need to do as part of um, any course and working in the NHS, which is things like um, sorting out a uniform, getting a stethoscope, um, making sure you're fully vaccinated for things like hepatitis B, um, uh, COVID obviously, and then um, there's the sort of uh, governance side of things like your DBS certificate, first aid, um, that type of stuff. So you have to tick a lot of boxes before you even get to the first day of a physio school. So yeah, there's a, there's a few things to kind of think about during that time. Anything for you, Reese, that you wish you'd done and you didn't? Um, it's difficult because I'm trying to think back 10 years ago when I moved away for uni because obviously I'm at home at the moment. Um, I think some things Claire said there, getting your DBS and your, your first aid and your jabs because you don't want to be getting them last minute, especially your, your jabs because I've had to miss days on my placement um, because I've had to go and get my jabs done or my COVID jabs, things like that. Um, but also, you know, you want to get your DBS done as early as you can so that you're hitting the road running and not stressing about a million things at the same time, definitely. Yeah, I'd add for students this year with jabs that lecturers will be understanding if you can't get an appointment with your GP straight away because oh, yeah. things are a bit busier. So like, don't panic either. <laughs> um, and one thing that I had is if you get something, if you need like special support for like disabled students allowance and stuff, get or exam special circumstances, get that in place before you start because you don't want to be having to sort that out a week before your first exam in January. It gets really stressful. Yeah, <laughs> um, and, and, and you can get a lot of support for that early on. 
Yeah. Absolutely. So say, you know, for instance, we were trying to look back and for me, it was many years ago when I was 21, uh, going back to uni, but over the summer, I'm thinking back when I was going into uni this time, I was thinking, trying to get hold of things like reading lists for the courses. Um, you know, is that something that should you should do as a student? Do you think that's being proactive or do you think that's been too stressful, Claire? Um, do you know what? I think there's a certain amount of enjoying your summer before you start. There's a, a sort of, you know, you've got to, you've got this golden opportunity that you don't have very often in life where you've done your big set of exams and you're about to start something new. And I think that time just to kind of relax and um, do what you want to do is is a great time. Don't stress too much about the course or what you might need to learn and that you'll be behind if you haven't done this, that and the other. If, if the course really want you to do anything prior to your arrival, they will send that through to you. I think we generally um, send out a little quiz just to get people thinking along various lines, but it's very low key and um, we are always like, have a good break, enjoy yourself, have some fun, come to us refreshed, ready to go, and we will give you everything from there. So that's our approach. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. I think it was a good approach. Yeah. Like, for me, I was one of the students that emailed being like, is there a reading list? Are you yeah. sure there's not a reading list? I'd really like to read something. <laughs> um, and some of that was fueled by COVID and not being able to do anything yeah. else. Um, yeah. But also like one thing I would say is, I know it's relevant for BSE, more so for MSE. The timetable is packed. It's very, very tight. If you are needing to work to support yourself through uni, which I was, what I chose to do was cram that work into holidays in more intense periods, rather than choose to work, say, two or three evenings a week through um, each term. And I think that was quite a successful method on reflection. Um, I think accidentally successful rather than I'd really pre-planned it. Um, just because it gives you that time when things do, the pressure ramps up a little bit and the timetable ramps up, that you've done that work and do a summer job that you enjoy. I actually really enjoyed my team at Test and Trace. It was great fun. Um, and then some of that financial pressure has been removed and that won't work for everybody. But just have a think about if you are working part time, how it's going to work and don't i think some people on our course fell foul to five days of lectures and then two days working at the weekend and not enough time to do other things and they just got themselves so tired that it would then became hard to cope so just have a sit and be really honest with yourself about how what you think you can cope with on top of your timetable and see if there's maybe a more imaginative way of use of of making those hours up because the holidays are long yeah definitely i mean we always find those students that like you say fran on the msc it's very difficult to have a job and do what is essentially a three-year course in two years it's you know pretty tall order so yeah working in the holidays and earning some money before is probably a, uh, the best route in Awesome. It removes one of those stresses, doesn't it? Um, you don't want to be worrying about financial stress as well as exams and ultimately, you know, having problems on the course because you, you're financially unable to continue or, or yeah. whatever. And if you do get a job, think about getting, lots of universities have jobs going. Like I have a little job at the uni which is doing campus tours for prospective students. And that's great because you're already there. So you yeah. cut the travel time out because you have to account for that as well. Like if you need to commute an hour for your job, you're then losing another two hours in travel, not just the work time. So those things are kind of good to consider as well. Absolutely. Would you say there's anything, obviously, as a, an unqualified student going into the first physiotherapy year, is there anything they could do work-wise? I think there's physiotherapy assistants things like that, that they could look at? Yeah, 100%. I think there's a lot of value in having some experience, whether it's actual work or volunteering, um, 
because you gather skills like communication, which is so important in physio and also things like how, you know, dealing with the public. You might also use it to explore some areas that you're interested in. So um, like I know Fran's got a dog, but there's a great uh, volunteer um, group called Pat a Dog and you take your dog around, you know, nursing homes and, and hospitals. So you're kind of mixing a little bit of of a sort of clinical setting and also perhaps um, your passion. And that, you know, that stretches long, you know, there's hospices, charities, reception cover at, um, you know, private practices. You might be into doing some social prescribing. So that's just kind of getting um, exercises for, um, for people or go on um, walks, you, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you do, but as long as you're kind of interacting um, and perhaps, you know, in, including a skill of your own or something that you enjoy doing. I think um, volunteering is great and it is part of the long-term NHS plan to have um, some good designed volunteer projects. So yeah, get involved in some of those. It's well worth it. Looks really good on a CV, looks good for future employment. Where would you go? Would that be on the NHS jobs website or where would you tend to find those volunteer positions? So, um, Often, if you live in a sort of town type of area, like I, I'm uh, in the sort of Richmond borough, and Richmond have a volunteer service called the the RVS, the Richmond Volunteer Service, and they literally list all of these places that are looking for volunteers. But equally, um, you, I think this is the value of things like LinkedIn, where you will see little jobs and things come up. Um, I've just got a friend who is working at Wimbledon and she's now looking for a, for a student to come with her and do some travel over the summer with two tennis players. So, you know, things like that come up, but you just have to be into the social media. You've got to kind of be proactive on going out and finding these things. They won't land in your lap. You've got to, you know, increase your network. And I think, you know, your people network is incredibly important and starting with um, whoever it might be, little groups of people that then mushroom into more exciting opportunities is, is a massive part of this kind of uh, time. Yeah, and I think this isn't actually so much that I learned from my physio, uh, from physio, but it, it's true here. Like sometimes just say yes, it might not appear to be the world's most exciting opportunity. And it may turn out not to be, but it also may lead down a road that is really exciting. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you just have to be a little bit brave and go for things that you might not have done. And you know, just local NHS hospitals have volunteers. Just rock up. There'll be a volunteer desk. Drop someone an email, ring them on the phone and say that I'm a student. I'd really I've got eight hours a week for my summer and just be honest about the time you've got because not everyone can volunteer 37 and a half hours a week for eight weeks that's fine but just say look on Mondays I can always come in and help is there something I can do um, and you'll be surprised how many doors start to open absolutely I think a lot of with physiotherapy a lot of the students that go into physiotherapy have a passion for it that's been found from somewhere and speaking to you know, whether it's your parents whether it's family friends whether you've had physio before speaking to the departments that you've had physio in or speak, as you mentioned going to the hospital going and asking at the desk people are nine times out of ten people are going to want volunteers and be happy with it it can be a lot of paperwork sometimes for them which is why some people might say no but nine times out of ten they will say they will welcome it and they will want it i think i think you mentioned it claire it will stand in good stead for your cv and for getting a job you've been proactive you've found something volunteer wise especially during these times i think one of the, the students i was on placement with uh, recently they said they had an interview because they were a third year they've gone on to be qualified now and they said in their interview, they were asked, what have they done through COVID? And they're like, well, what do you mean? It's like, well, apart from you being a student, what else have you done? Have you volunteered? Have you done anything outside of university to yeah. be proactive and to get more out of the time? But like equally, 
said oh. I went for a walk with my neighbor who's quite frail three times a week I, that's a really good thing as well and that's you know that's community spirit that's being kind that's you know good quality of life there's all of those things so it doesn't it doesn't always have to be the most flashy yeah. thing uh, you don't have to have gone off to Wimbledon and you know treated Andy Murray uh, you know it can be something really local and really small as well and, and that's no less important um so you yeah, don't worry if lots of other people are off doing big exciting wonderful things um there's kind of a right path um, yeah. just before we finish claire do you have any tips for people so students who might be going from first to second year or from second to third year who might be going on to placement and is that summer a different summer to the before you start uni um I think it possibly is a different summer as the realization starts to creep in that 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 things are going to ramp up um, and yeah you really need to check then that you've got all your governance side of things sewn up um, in terms of, of DBS etc but yeah I think also at that point you should have a really solid kind of theoretical basis you're going out to test your theory you're going out to, um, you know, show your supervisor what you really know. And so kind of being backed up on that front, on that side of things is like just so, you know, positive in terms of planning and preparation for your placements. So, yeah, that sort of first to second year is really about consolidating all that you know in terms of your theory so that when you go out and see that first patient, you're not thinking oh my god how do I assess a patient again what's the subjective what do I do you know just get your basics um ready in your head to go um, a little push for first steps we're going to do some videos at some point about preparing for placements in certain departments like respiratory neuro um all of those things so keep an eye out over the next 12 months because hopefully they might keep give some like relax the nerves for us some students nice. <laughs> absolutely i think that is one of the stress most stressful things i've had is going the week before you go on to placement likewise the week before you start uni and start the course the stress levels ramp up a little bit and you start to worry about whether you're prepared enough for as your first lecture or your first day on placement the very similar experiences i think can be quite stressful yeah it can be but you've got to always remember that people understand that you, you know if it's your first placement they're not going to expect great things but you're there to learn absolutely and that's that's the thing we are there to learn we are going to uni to learn as well you know claire as a lecturer i'm sure you don't expect us to ramp up and rock up on the first day knowing no. everything no um, i'll have a job if that's the <laughs> As much as we'd like to turn up and be able to answer all the questions, um, it's yeah. more about the students being comfortable asking more questions, I think. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any, any last words, Claire, for potential students coming up? Um, go out there. Enjoy it. It's going to be a fantastic career. Um, so, yeah, just make the most of your time at university. You know, start your network, get your LinkedIn profile going. You know, but yeah, number one important, it will seem like Fran said earlier, an absolute mountain to climb is at the start, but you know, stick with it, just persevere. And once you get through the first year and you start to apply things in the second year, you, you'll realize, you know, the, the, the value of that knowledge. Absolutely. I think for me, as I've done my first placement this year, my first one last summer was actually canceled due to COVID. That stress has pushed on into like February, March last this year. And I've found now I've got a lot more relaxed with things. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you will stress, but it will be okay as well. I think that's the most important thing to remember. 100%. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like the difference between mid September last year and July of this year is colossal. <laughs> so just take a deep breath and keep plowing on and and actually the penny will drop and and it's great fun so, perfect but we'll end it there and this has been visual matters first steps taking over chewing it over
Thank you for listening and watching.